Now here's my filter Mark 1 and you can see from the colour of the wadding that's around the edge here just how much rubbish it collects. It collects a lot of dust on the surface here, look you can see it just brushing off. All right, so I've increased the area by probably 30%. Um, in fact, I've increased the area more than that because there's a bigger open area on the new filter. Well, the machine will now become an assembly station for at least part of this assembly. I'm going to be using this WC123 PETG weld cement. Now, although it's designed for PETG, um, it works very well with acrylic. It just takes a little bit longer to cure off. So sometimes we have to wait maybe 30 seconds to a minute to get it to uh, to get it to go off. So we'll produce the pieces out of a hat as we go. And the first two pieces we're going to assemble are these two pieces here, which are the locators that go into the um, the air spout at the back. So we put those together, and this has to go together a certain way. So bottom right hand corner and then we're going to poke these through it, like that. Now I happen to have a 40 millimeter block of acrylic here which is just the right height to keep this level. So the idea is what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of um, glue into each one of these joints and we should see it running in the joint as we put it in. We don't have to worry too much about the excess on the surface because this is a frosted material and it doesn't really show but we will wipe the excess off and then we'll just lean on these for about a minute. Now while we're doing that we might as well put a little bit up here as well. Just move it around from time to time just to make sure it's not stuck to the, uh, to the work table. Now it's very convenient that these blocks also, when I rotate them around, they sit a little bit taller than that, which is what we need as well, because we're going to turn this over now. Now, what we're going to perform now is a bit of a tricky operation. So you'll need some masking tape, and you'll need to do a little bit of preparation work. Tear off a piece about four inches long, and on these pieces with holes in, We'll put a piece on each end. These pieces here, with the lugs on, are going to go upwards. And you will see that there are matching holes in these pieces. So plug a corner together and hold it together with tape, like that. Now it's starting to be a little bit more stable. We can do the same with this one. And then finally we can do this one. We don't need to do the tape up too tight at the moment. We still need some flexibility in here because we've now got to squeeze this one into this other set of holes. So we can pull the ends, pull the large sides away to start with and tuck these into the slots on the end. And then we can try and do the same on the other end, but we should have to push the sides out like that. And then we can click these in and these. There we go. So now we can have a go at holding the corners a little bit tighter, squeeze the tape up, and that's our basic assembly done. So now we've got to glue it. Now we need a piece of scrap material six millimeter thick underneath this bottom face here so that we can press down on the top here without putting any strain on these joints at the corners. We'll take the load directly down onto this flat surface because what we're now going to do is we're going to put glue in these little spots along here and we're going to stick these down, tack the whole thing together. So,
You'll see the glue running into the joint as you tuck it into the end of these Again, just wipe the excess off. And then we take two or three minutes. We hold the whole assembly together. So this is the right way up, with this at the bottom right hand corner. Okay, when I let go, I want to make sure that these dark patches, which are along here where the gluing does, doesn't change shape, which means it has actually locked. Okay, now we can carefully turn it over 180 degrees. We can do the other side, exactly the same, the other long side. There we go, that looks stable. Now we're going to turn it through 90 degrees. We might have to just peel the tape back a little bit from some of the tabs. And then the other end. Okay, now we've tacked it together now. We'll put our blocks back on here again, and now that that's sitting upright, we'll go around and we'll just run a bead of glue along the edges there and that will secure that in a few minutes we can then turn it over and we do exactly the same thing so we'll just leave that to dry for about 10 minutes now <clears throat> while that's drying off I'm using a piece of Let's call it scrap acrylic. It's a funny colour, blue, which I'm unlikely to use. You could use a piece of um, MDF, a piece of cardboard even, corrugated cardboard. So what we're doing, we're making a template so that we can mark the wadding to cut it to go into the filter. Now here's the wadding. You can see you get a lot for very little. There's probably enough there to do four or five filters and uh, that costs probably I think about three or four pound. Trust me you need a template because it's got a mind of its own. Now what I'm going to try and do is to cut this in one piece and fold it in half. Now I would advise you to use these rather than a Stanley knife because yeah it, it tends to rip. Okay so there's our filter material. Well here we are back with our <clears throat> our blocks on the table again for the final part of the assembly. Now here's our piece of polyester wadding that fits in there quite nicely. It's a little bit too full which is great because it means it's going to fluff itself up and sit tight against the front cover. And here is the front cover Bear in mind, we've got our plug here at the bottom right hand corner and these pieces here, which are the funny shaped slots, sit at the top. But before you attempt to put those in, thread these little pieces at the bottom in and just catch them under the lugs. And then you can push the top down over those and from the top you should be able to just slide it underneath the tabs like that. That's how easy it is to assemble and disassemble. Let's just do that again. We can just push it up and the whole thing comes off. We need to tuck these little bottom corners in first. One material thickness. Then we can push the top in, put a bit of pressure on it and pull the whole thing down and it locks down nicely. There is a chance that you can knock this and lift it off during assembly. So here we've got a couple of little T-tape 
So here we've got a couple of little T-shaped tabs that will slip in there like that. And they will prevent this from coming apart. So they will just lock the whole assembly together. Now the smaller one that I had before was very easy to get into the machine. This one is a bit more like a Chinese puzzle. You'll have to thread it in very carefully. Now we shall need both the front and the side doors open. Now we're going to lay it down. Uh, let me see, how does it go? I don't think it'll go in the same way. We'll just check. made it smaller, slightly, it goes in the, the side door. And hopefully there's just enough light in there for you to see that what we do is to lift it up and we just offer it into the extract spout and just in front of that spout we'll just push it in and it clips in. So there we are, it's sitting in the back of the machine. It's a very large area because the principle of any pre-filter is to keep the air velocity as low as possible as it passes through the filter. So you need the largest area possible and the freest flow. Now the flow might be free through that wadding, but it's a very, very tortuous path for any particle of sticky stuff or dust to try and get through that wadding. It's offering no extra resistance to flow to the Purex unit. what it always does, hovering around about the 310. Well, hopefully that simple device, a lot, lot cheaper to replace than this rather expensive bag filter, so it should hopefully prolong the life of this filter quite a lot. I've had one of these in my machine now for over a year. I don't use it a great deal, but hey, you saw the state of the filter when I took it out of this machine. That's about the third filter that I've had on this machine. And every time I've taken it off, it's been as dirty and as mucky as that. So it's doing a very good job. So I hope it works well for your application and thanks again for your attention.